Hi, everyone. Welcome to Decipher Your Health, a project uh, that's being run by me, Marika Froman Derning. I'm a registered nurse in Montreal, and my partner, Karen Molander, emergency medicine physician. So we're here, we're doing these regular videos and we also have a blog where we talk about the issues that people might come across when they're trying to get good healthcare. So it, we're, we'll be answering questions about the different topics that people have. So today, Karin is gonna discuss how to optimize your visit to a uh, doctor's office, a clinic, or an emergency department and how to make it easier for you. So now I'm going to let Karin take over. Why trust us? Well, we've been in the business for decades. Uh, I was trained at Stanford Hospital and have been practicing emergency medicine for greater than 30 years. And I am doing this because I want patients to be more involved in their care. And I want to optimize that interaction that they have with our healthcare system. So whether you are having a telehealth appointment, an email visit, with your doctor, a text message, a visit to an urgent care, an emergency department, or your routine office visit, how you optimize that experience. So get a pen and paper and get ready, folks. Let's go through this. So number one, bring your ID, bring your health card, and bring a patient advocate. What's a patient advocate? This could be someone who won't panic at the sight of blood if you're going to the ER, just saying, uh, but someone who can help advocate for who you are, what your interests are, and can be able to write notes clearly and succinctly if a topic is being discussed that could be controversial. For example, sometimes when people hear the word that they have cancer, all they hear coming from the doctor for the next 20 minutes is wah, 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 wah. So you wanna have someone there writing the notes down so you know what to expect, okay? Karen, what about bringing your medications with you? If you take a lot of medications, do you prefer to see the medications in the bag or would you like the list? I think it's helpful to have the medications in a bag and if time permits, please, uh, being able to sit down with the patient and saying, okay, how are you taking this medication? Because on the bottle, it might say three times a day, but in reality, they're taking it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So being able to go through with the patient, especially if there's a language barrier, or uh, let's say that the patient has difficulty with their eyesight. Mm -hmm. And what about, um, not everybody knows their medical history very well. You know, What are the most important things that they should be able to say to you? So I, I think the key thing is knowing if you have a very severe allergic reaction to any medication. And that does not mean that erythromycin makes your stomach upset. This is a life-threatening reaction to a medication. For example, um, my throat closes and I have shortness of breath if I take penicillin. That is an important reaction that we need to know. And just so you guys know, when you come to, for example, the emergency department, you're probably gonna get asked that question multiple times. Mm -hmm. Why? For your own benefit. Because when you first show up at the emergency department with a cut finger, you may be so panicked about the fact that you're bleeding from your finger that you fail to remember, oh my gosh, I'm allergic to penicillin. So we do a lot of these things in order to make sure that we don't miss anything. It's not that we didn't document it, or it's not that we, are trying to frustrate the blazes out of you by making you repeat stuff. There is some logic. It's the same reason why you might get exasperated that you're having to repeat your story multiple times. But sometimes the more times you tell your story, the more information comes out. I don't know about you, Marika, but remember when you were training as a nursing student and you might be the first one in the room to see a patient and the patient tells story A but by the time it gets to the attending physician, story E, yeah. multiple things have changed. And yeah. so that is part of the reason is we wanna see what you're starting to remember, what you might have forgotten, and also see if there's additional information that we can get from other people that you brought with us because they know you much better than I or Marika know you. So oftentimes when a patient advocate will come with a, with a person to the emergency department, I will turn to them and say, 
you know this soul much better than I. Can you provide any additional input that you think is important for me to hear? That's really important. And um, I think, you know, we're very often very stressed. We're going into an, uh, an urgent care or an emergency department, and sometimes even just a regular doctor's visit. Sometimes, you know, you just don't like to go. So knowing these steps beforehand and knowing what kinds of things that you should bring with you should make the process, at least the beginning of the process, smoother. Uh, the electronic health record is extremely helpful. Don't get me wrong, but that does not absolve the patient from knowing their body and their history. Right. Because one of the challenges is, is a lot of these electronic health records don't communicate with one another. So when a patient says, oh, the information's in the computer, that could be true, but Cerner might not necessarily talk with Epic, might not necessarily talk with uh, the system from the VA. Please listen to uh, the next comment. We're going to go on a little bit more about what to do at that office visit and what you should bring with you additional information. Right. So please subscribe to the channel and uh, don't forget that this is for informational purposes. Karen, you want to say your little bit there? We love to educate you. We want to optimize your experience with the healthcare system. However, we do not have a personal relationship with you. It is important that you bring the information you are hearing here and talk to your primary care provider. That is a person who you have a medical relationship with. That's right. Thank you. Thanks for visiting. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. To be continued.